113,000. That's the number of men, women, and children on the National Transplant, Transplant Waiting List as of January 2019. Each day, 20 of those people will die waiting for a transplant. Every 10 minutes, a new name is added to the list. Did you know that 95% of people in the United States support organ donation? Yet, only 58% of them have signed up to be organ donors. 58. That is insane. Organ donation is the process of having one or more of your organs removed from your body and transplanted into another person. You either consent to it while you are alive or a Mexican will decide when you have passed. I want to tell you a story about a boy named Blake from Texas. The doctors knew Blake needed a heart transplant as soon as he was born. He had a heart defect in the vitro that was 100% fatal. Just 16 days after Blake was born, a 15-month-old donor popped up. It was the perfect match. Although it did bring heartache on the 15-month-old's family, it gave Blake and his family another chance. Why should you become an organ donor? It's simple. It gives another person the opportunity of life. And I believe it is one of the most selflessness acts a person can do. Today, I want to talk to you about why organ donors are important and the process of donating your organs once you have passed and while you are still alive. Let's get started. Picture this. You receive a phone call one day and you are informed that your mother or your child or your grandfather has an organ failing and they need a transplant. They are put on a waiting list with thousands of other people. You wait weeks, months, and yet you still do not have a match. Just as you are about to lose hope, a few states over, a teenager gets into a car accident and dies. His driver license says organ donor. After a few clicks, turns out he is a perfect match. It's crazy to think that a stranger's life and their morality saved your family from heartache. After the surgery, your loved one as well. Sometimes this happens to families. Other times, they are not so lucky. Organ donors are heroes. Sometimes their lives come to an end to bring another to a new start. They have realized that once they depart this earth, they do not need what is inside of their body. They can give it up for others. They have realized that although they may be leaving, a little bit of them will still continue to exist in someone else. Organ donors are important because they provide a life-giving opportunity to those who have lost hope. The organ donation process is not as hard as some people may think. If a person is declared dead, a clinical specialist will determine if their organs are suitable for donation. 
a ventilator will be put on their organs to provide oxygen to them while the decision is made if they will donate or not. If the person who has died went on the donor registry list before they died, then their wish will be abided by. Their organs will be donated. If it was not decided, their next of kin gets to decide. If the next of kin says yes, they sign a next of kin form, and then the process continues. The person's blood type, height, weight, and hospital are put into a national database to find a match. Once a match has been found, the recipient's surgical team will go to wherever the donor's body is at and they will perform surgery to remove the organs that will be taken. After that is done, those organs are transported to the recipient. They have their surgery. For the donor, they are stitched back up and prepared for their funeral. The surgery did in, in no way affected the donor's appearance, so they are able to have an open casket funeral. About two weeks after the funeral, the donor family will receive a letter from the donation center that tells them where the organs went. Obviously, it is only basic information So, you don't have to be dead to donate. The other way you can do it is while you're alive. Uh, you do have to be healthy and over the age of 18 to donate. If you want to donate while you are under the age of 18, you do need your parents' consent. So, there are two ways of donating. You can be a directed donator, which is where you will donate your organs to someone you are biologically related to, like your sister or brother. You can also donate it to your spouse. And you can also have your recipient know your information. That is a directed donator. The other one is a non-directed donator. This is where you want to know nothing about your recipient. You just go to your organ donation center, you tell them what organ you want to donate, and they take care of the rest. They take care of the matching. So once you decide which organ donator you wish to be, the steps are pretty easy. You go to your organ donation center and you will get a medical screening. Here they determine if your organs are matched and if they're healthy and if they're suitable to be donated. You get your blood taken. After they determine that you are good to go, you have your match, you go into surgery. And the number of days you stay in the hospital after your surgery depends on what organ you got removed. Kidneys, it's a few days. Liver, it's about a week. So it's not a very hard process to donate. In conclusion, no one truly knows what happens when we die. One thing you can be certain of is that another person will be able to continue their life happy and healthy because you donated your organs. Becoming an organ donor gives another person a chance. It allows a four-year-old to become a teenager and it allows a grandmother to spend more time with her family. Even though you are gone, 
a piece of you will continue to live. In a time of tragedy, organ donation is a bright light. But you don't have to be dead to do donate either. You will still have the same impact on the family and the recipient if you donate while you are alive. I believe organ donation is a wonderful thing. And I hope I was able to at least convince someone to look into donating an organ. Thank you for watching.